So I've been in Portland for a week now and I've been trying to make plans with this guy for so long things keep coming up or our schedules just don't align and if you're big in the E36 world you probably know who I'm talking about. So we are going right now to hang out with item B, Evan Brown, depending on which way you know him. Big E36 guy around here, basically the plug for fairly priced BMWs, particularly E36s in the Portland area. Um, we met on the internet, you know, some years ago. We've been we've been cool on the internet. So being in town, I just had to go see him. And I figured why not go film something with him. So we're heading to his compound right now, and then we will see what we get into. I'll probably show you guys around uh, his cars and stuff. He's got some pretty cool stuff, and then we'll see where we go from there. So currently sitting in Portland traffic, which is no fun, but the city's over there to the left. You can kind of see. Yeah, there's the city. Uh, yeah, sticking this traffic is not very fun, but ice cold AC, cannot complain. This car, I have put so many miles on it. I've been doing hard driving out in the Dallas area. Um, just been having a really good time with this car and there's me slamming on the brakes. So anyway, I'll sit to this track for a little bit and then I'll see you guys when we're there. Well, looks like we made it. What's up dude? You guys know the man? Evan, hey, aka I'm, I'm Evan. Item uh, B. Item B, yeah. This is our little compound. Welcome. The auto handler compound, right? Yep. We're like tucked away uh, in the far reaches of East Portland, and uh, yeah, we put a couple of cars out. We're just giving Josh the old tour around here, showing yep. him like what we're up to, and happy to have him from uh, Chicago. So, yeah. Welcome, so man. thank you, bro. I appreciate it. So I got the E34 parked up, made myself right at home, and I just realized these are the same trees that line my driveway. Dude, so this perfect. this is literally I feel like I'm at home right now. This is the same this is the same scenery. Perfect. But so I figured we'd go around and he could show us the, the shop, talk about what he does, and show us some of these cool cars because I like to see cool BMWs. I'm sure you guys do too. So yeah, yeah. Um, so. so yeah, come on, come along. Let's do it. These are just a couple of my personal cars. Uh, this is a 2001 uh, 740i Short Sport on air and uh, cast a Alpina soft lines. Uh, the car is pretty much like. It's kind of like a no expenses spared type of build in terms of the parts list. It's got like dual Vire 485C compressors. Um, I did the entire audio system in the car so it's completely replaced. It's got um, wireless Apple CarPlay, perforated M5 steering wheel. Yeah, let's, let's, um, let's yeah. see the see the setup. The interior is like just... Oh, it's locked. Oh, it's yeah. just like E36 doors, yeah. huh? So pretty simple on the inside. Um, just basic black, Montana black interior. That wheel's sick though. And the car play. So I've owned a, a lot of E38s over the years, probably about 10. And for this one, um, I decided I just wanted to finally do one on air and Alpina wheels. I actually had one in 2020 that was six speed swapped on 20 inch style 32s and I forgot about that car actually. Yeah, I ended up regretting the six speed swap to be honest. Really? It's kind of like, you can make a 4,500 pound car shift, but it's still yeah. like a 4,500 pound car. Like it's never gonna yeah. be a three series. I kind of had this dumb realization where I was like, why do I want to make my seven yeah. series drive like a three series when I have a three series? So for this one, I left it auto. Um, I'll show you guys the trunk, it's pretty cool. That's actually a really interesting thing to hear from someone that's done that because when I did my 34 wagon, even that I didn't really enjoy in manual. You yeah, think it'll liven up the no, car? It really... I was fine with it. Yeah. Like, I realized, I was like, man, I just spent all this money to make it have three pedals, and I just had just as much fun with it. Awesome. Yeah. But there yeah, so the trunk is pretty cool. It's got a custom sub box. It hides all of the amplifiers. Oh, that's really nice. Uh, the compressors, the tank. So it's all virtually, you know, stock. So you can't even tell. In there. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Um, it's got a little onboard, you know, tire inflator. And that's really nice. We reupholstered this part of it black. Uh, so it kind of matches the motif of the car a little bit better. That's sweet. Um, but yeah, it's pretty simple. It's just kind of like a stylish, steezy daily driver. Yeah. Um, you got to have one of those. Um, no plans for it to for it to gain any power or uh, really anything like that. I'm perfectly fine with just yeah. the stock M62. It's, M62 been good to you? Yeah, no, it's been yeah. good. Um, I've had many that aren't, but this one's got... Yeah. Uh, 150,000 and I got it from a retired Air Force pilot who did the guides and 
Um, this is from a retired uh, Marine, this car. Oh, really? Okay. That's, that's funny, something yeah. Something about old military guys and older BMWs. Yeah, they take care of them though, usually, so that's a good thing. But yeah, so this is just the Cruiser. Uh, Moving on down the line. You guys probably know this car. If you know this guy, yeah, this you probably know pretty, this car. It's pretty ubiquitous on the internet. Um, it was clean until it rained this morning, so I apologize yep, for that. Same, but, same. Uh, this is a 98 M3 sedan, uh, fully built for drifting, but a uh, pretty simple drift build. Um, if you guys follow Josh, you know it doesn't take too much to make these cars drift well. So no. it's really a lot of stuff on the aesthetic side but um just the the bare minimum on the performance side so it's on coilovers <laughs> basic angle kit um it's got a tune a really simple car welded diff uh we rebuilt the, the cable handbrake system and that works well and mm -hmm. so it's basically just a little like sea time car that looks super good stock srd2 right um, yeah, stock still, is it still, um, doesn't even have an M50 intake Yeah, still on stock it. intake, yeah, right? Yeah, still stock wow. intake and everything. Um, the fiberglass on the car is all actually designed and built by me um, and the company that I own, Auto Handler. Mm -hmm. um, so it's got a So that's the fenders and that's it. all the arrow and stuff is from this guy. And it is sick because it's hard to make a good looking body kit for these cars. Yeah, I, I like, really, really like, hard. I don't really like the whole like let's make the BMWs look like 240SXs like mm -hmm. trend or whatever so I, I also agree. wanted my car to look unique so I just kind of took some stuff from existing designs and kind of put my flip on it and I wanted to maintain the like classic BMW motorsport heritage look and you know with a little bit of drift flare mm -hmm. thrown in and yeah and the car looks really good it drives really good it's super fun. Sedans are really hard to make rear over fenders work and this actually works really well that's the one thing I was most surprised of when I saw this in person is how nice this actually looks. Yeah. It came out really sweet. Yeah, so. yeah. And then the yellow seats on the inside too. Yeah, yellow seats, yellow shirts tucked in, steering wheel, just a few bits of yellow to, to tie the whole thing together. Which is perfect. I mean, that looks amazing. That's really yeah, sweet. Yeah, yeah. SSR professors. Yeah, SP, SP, these are ones. ones. SP ones, yeah. SP yeah. ones are best, dude. They're like my favorite wheel ever. I, I agree. I love how these look. I got SP threes on my E46 now. So the brothers. And these oh, are these. actually cool um, for a drift car because they're squared. So they're oh, really? 18 by 10, negative five all around. That's so they aggressive. They actually have a five inch lip on all four corners of the car, which, which is, is really pretty, nice. Uh, pretty aggressive for a drift setup. But oh yeah. I was able to get them tucked in and. Oh, they look sweet. Have in stock power. Two fifteens in the back are about as much as it wants to spin in yeah. third, so it yeah. ended up working out real good. Sweet. So now we'll get into the shop tour. The I auto mean, handler yeah, shop. Calling it a shop's a little bit of an exaggeration. This is kind of more of a garage. It's um, got a lot of cool stuff though. Yeah, yeah. We have this four bay shop um, right next door with lifts, a uh, paint booth, the uh, tire machines and all that stuff um, that my buddy Seb runs called Magic City Garage. And so this shop is just basically like my little garage area. There's not a ton of stuff in here, just basic hand tools, um, no lift or anything. And Everything then, you need to get it done though. Yeah, yeah. You don't need no fancy stuff. Exactly. You guys know how I work. <laughs> um, and we actually completely rebuilt this entire building. We drywalled the entire interior. We painted the roof oh, wow. black. We did all the lighting in here. I mean, this place is basically falling apart when we first moved in. <laughs> it so looks just, nice. Just getting that going yeah. is like a two or three month process. And then we've got like uh, the uh, white elephant in the room, which is my LS1 swapped uh, 328 coupe. I'm currently in need of an engine replacement. I actually yeah. have another engine for it. We just have been trying to find time to get it put in. I'll show you. Is the one. engine in it though? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah let's yeah. check this out. I've never actually seen an LS swapped uh, BMW in person. Yeah. Oh so boy. It's It fits pretty good. You'd be surprised. That actually does fit pretty yeah. good. Wow. So there's, you know, it's very pragmatic under here. Um, I'm the type of guy that, it, as far as the way I build That's my sick. cars, like, at a drift event, if I never have to lift the hood, it's considered a successful drift mm -hmm. event. So I kind of skip like the polish everything and wire tuck everything. I, want, I, I agree with that. That's I how I am too. Serviceable and functional, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, this thing is actually going to be getting a new engine in the next couple of weeks. Um, it's it's about time. It's it's been sitting here for about yeah. A I could tell with months. the dust. Yeah. yeah, it's been used to 
as a freaking table more than it has as a car later, this is so. probably what people would know this is like og og like yeah. I, not og og you, you go way back i mean yeah you used yeah. to hang out you know with with jake and them with the what was yeah. the old car you used to have uh rx7, RX7. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah so that's even be, that's before my time even yeah, that's yeah. Way, way back. so but this is like if you're like talking like probably bmw item yeah, b yeah yeah this is, the first, this like, is BMW og finished. yeah so and you guys probably know this. It's pretty simple car again. Um, What's the inside? Can I open it? Yeah, it's kind of pulled apart a little bit, but oh yeah, um, it has welded half cage. It has carpet, but virtually not really much else. A little rear seat delete and um, sub, of course. It's kind of a, a little bit of a little bit of race car, a little bit of street car. Mm -hmm. um, this car actually has dual calipers and quarter inch welded subframe reinforcements and um, a few other solid bushings and stuff like that that makes it a little bit more of a kind of more track build than, mm -hmm. uh, than the yellow m3 is yeah that's what i was gonna say this was definitely more of like your track car which is surprising to hear that you're kind of going towards the yellow car over this so like street a stock car can be more enjoyable on the track oh, than 100, 100%. a built one and also it's like uh, it's all about like what you're willing to live with you know it's like the the yellow car i i take it to the grocery store i go drive it around for fun um i cruise it to the restaurants mm -hmm. and stuff like that and it's not like this big undertaking where it's like this thing is all solid bushings. There's a rear cage, so there's like no storage in it. Um, <laughs> it sounds and feels kind of like a piece of heavy equipment when you're like shifting it and moving <laughs> Especially it. Especially with the LS, else. I bet, right? Yeah, is it loud? Yeah. No, no, it has like three mufflers. It's actually, oh, yeah. It's pretty quiet. Um, oh, nice. But yeah, so this is basically just. This is uh, sweet. Just my little zone. You yeah. got a lot of really cool artwork in here, I was yeah, saying. Yeah, shit I've collected over the, the past few years. Um, this stuff is all uh, facilitated by Patina Handle. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Oh, yeah, me and, me and Roman. We, yeah, I know yeah. Roman. He sends me a bunch of cool stuff. Shout out to him. He also has really cool cup holders for these cars that I ran in my 30 and a half or my 36. I actually haven't installed yet, but otherwise... Then these are your fenders on display, yeah, right? Yeah, these are actually, um, those are some prototypes. So the one oh, on prototypes. the left is the E46 sedan prototype fenders. Oh, sweet. And then the ones on the right are actually a E39 prototype fender that is never going to come out that I sold. Really? I actually sold those to Sean Troy. I need to mail them out to him. Oh, really? Yeah. He's gonna Shout out to Sean. Yeah, I think he's going to put them on his M5. But really? Yeah, That's so. interesting to hear. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I just toyed around with it. I wanted to see if there was any market interest if I made mm -hmm. a set and honestly i don't think it really uh necessitates like putting them all the way in as a production product if i'm only going to sell a couple of pairs a year and stuff like that that's the thing with five series as i've said in many videos the aftermarket support for them is not all that there people don't like to modify them quite like these cars and e30s and stuff so it's hard to make things i mean it's cool that you did that though like that's Looking out for the market though, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wanted to see what it would be like. So. Yeah. I mean, those look sweet. I bet those yeah. would look really cool in the no, car. They, 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 they so I'm interested to see what Sean does with that. Yeah. For but. Sure. Then we got some flags over here. We got some decks. Are these uh, garage welt or are these? Yeah, I gotta have a couple of garage welt decks. Always. Um, some. What are they? Are these Hammond faces? No, those are OZ uh, Anki collab faces. They're like they're like one of one in five by one twenty. There's only like. Four oh, wow. pairs of these that are known to exist, and they're all in five by one twelve except for this one set. Oh wow! Yeah, that's so, pretty sweet. Yeah, then some RS two faces that are uh, Andrew. Oh yeah, he's telling me about building those. That's yeah. a re that's a really cool drawing. Oh yeah, I got sent that when my car fell on top. of Oh, you want to talk here. about that story or no? Oh uh, yeah. It's up, do, so this little... this car itself. Yeah, tell them yeah, what happened. Yeah, so August 7th of last year, um, I was at a drift event in this car and it was experiencing some sort of loss of power and other random crap and uh, I was trying to troubleshoot it and I had the front of the car elevated, the rear wheels were on the ground, it was in gear and I was reaching around and uh, the starter wires shorted and it cranked the car over and the car actually drove off the jack stands and landed on top of me. Mm -hmm. And ended up uh, putting me in the ICU for nine days, I broke 20 bones and my left arm was paralyzed for like six months. Jesus. And I spent the better part of uh, 2021 from August until December in a wheelchair in a hospital bed. It was really gnarly. That is a crazy story. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. so you're doing good now, it seems, right? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. seem like you got to, all your going to the gym and, uh, all your motion back. Yeah, yeah. It was a struggle, man. That's lucky, though, man. That's yeah, yeah. so. Which part of the car were you underneath? Um, I was laying on my side, underneath the passenger frame rail from that side. And so, just, so like coming out like this. 
No, no, I was, my feet were kind of facing towards the back of the car. Oh, okay, yeah, I see. Under it, under it, and uh, yeah, I talk a little bit more in detail about it on my own YouTube channel if you guys are interested. Yeah, I'll put, I'll link but, Evan's stuff in this thing, and I'll flash it right here if you want to go watch that full video. But yeah, it was, it was not fun, man. I do not no. recommend it. No, that was a scary. I remember hearing the news about that. That was scary, and that let people be known. When you have your rear on the ground, if, it wasn't chalked, right? Chalk would probably, would have it helped or no? It was chalked? It was not chalked. It, okay, so that would have helped. Yeah, yeah you got to make sure. Disconnect and, the battery. That's, yeah, that's, I'm, that's I'm bad cool. about stuff like that too because you think you're doing a quick job and you think you're going to be in and out and yeah. shit can happen. And he's lucky. And luckily there's a lot of people there that they lifted the car for you by hand, right? Yeah, there's yeah. like 15 people around yeah. the car that picked it up. Yeah, that's a crazy I, I story. I my life for sure. Yeah. And I guess like long story short, you know, uh, I've been going to drift events for like close to a decade. I can't tell you how many times I've needed to make a minor little fix and you just slip under there and check something out and slip back out under there. And mm -hmm. you begin to sort of, I don't want to say you're like reckless or unsafe, but you be, you don't really always think about the no, exactly when you've done something so many dozens yep. of times. So that's when it gets dangerous. Yeah, yeah, and then that's when something battle happens. So be yep. careful out there. So there's a little lesson from Evan. Yeah. But sweet man. So this is awesome. Like I was saying earlier, we've been trying to figure this out, meeting up all week. Yeah, right. I know. I it, know. Schedules just weren't aligning. I was doing a lot of exploring. He's a busy man, so. I'm glad we were able to get this done. I appreciate you showing me yeah, around. Anytime, bro. Pleasure anytime. to absolutely meet you. Anytime, man. And uh, yeah, hopefully, maybe one day we'll see Evan again. Maybe he'll yeah, be in yeah, Chicago yeah, or yeah, exactly. some sort of event or whatever. But, anyways, we'll call it there. Yep, Thank you guys for guys. watching. Peace.